Uh, so I'm in a situation where I, I've done a lot of math. I've figured out that in X amount of time, if Y things happen, I could quit and, and have Z amount of time to become successful. Uh, however, also at the same time, for a very long and present story, I have a pair of aging parents uh, whose option for living at this point is to spend all of their money on long-term care until they are destitute and can become eligible for Medicaid. So I'm in this sort of moral quandary. Of, I have money that I could use to try to get myself off, off, <laughs> uh, and potentially lose all of. Or, or I can continue to squander that with the knowledge that I'm eventually going to have to help my aging parents with a terrible situation. Are there any of you on the panel who have had this kind of sort of moral and ethical dilemma of what is the best way for you to, to see to your own personal needs and the needs of your family or your parents or some other uh, person for whom you may be accountable? Yeah, that's really tough. That's, really that's, tough. that's, tough. that's yeah. a nasty situation. Unfortunately, I've got a similar story. God help me. Um, so, as my wife would point out to you, my father and I are almost the same person, just split out in age a bit. Um, my sister, who is a year and a half younger than me, uh, took a much different path in life. I have no children, I'm 35. Um, my sister had her first child at 18 and rapidly had two more. Um, she, um, let's just say there's trailer parks involved. I'll leave it at that. Um, I don't she owns a bunch of trailer parks? Yeah, I mean, that's great. Uh, sis. But there was an unfortunate situation where my nephew was uh, sexually abused at one point. And hey, there goes the panel. Yeah, yeah I know. It's yeah, yeah, I knew I was going to bring everything down. Like, yeah, well, it, it's important that I get to the, the point of this, and I'll yeah. try to make it quick. Um, he, um, he also has autism, and apparently, you know, what was done to him he thought was normal, so he started trying to repeat the behavior. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, as yeah, a result, uh, there were some situations that played out. State took custody of my nephew away from my father, or from my sister. Excuse me. My father and I both initially jumped to the same reaction. They were going to put him into a mental institution for sex offenders, <coughs> which my nephew is not. He he just needed help. He needed counseling. Um, so my father beat me to the punch, much to my wife's joy, I suppose. We, um, the problem is, whatever would have played out from here was going to be bad, because um, my sister is not the most responsible of people. Um, what followed was five years of my father being unable to work to raise my nephew. And the, the moral of this winds up being, there comes a point where it's not entirely heartless to think of yourself before your family members. Um, and I'm not saying this to give my sister a free pass. This was a terrible choice. But in hindsight, neither my father or I should have jumped to the rescue there because it was empowering my sister not to take responsibility for the situation. Um, there's a valid point there. There's there's a time when, when you, it, it sucks to even say it out loud, but you have to maybe be a little bit selfish yes. to, to take a risk. <laughs> <laughs> because risk is always a, um, can be construed as a negative thing. Uh, risk implies that there is a potential very bad outcome. And a lot of times the potential outcome could be we lose our car, we lose our house, we end up in a worse situation. And uh, the potential bonus, you just have to decide, is it, is it uh, not even more likely, just is the payoff worth it? Uh, and I mean, for me especially, it was, um, we had an infant child who I was potentially thrusting into economic depression by leaving a well-paying job for a non-paying job. <laughs> and, uh, you know, to this day though, I mean, so far she's almost six years old and she does not know of a time when both of her parents weren't happy and self-sufficient and uh, not working horrible nine to five jobs. I mean, we did for the first year of her life, but she doesn't remember that part. All she knows is that we're all home together and we're all happy and we all, you know, I make stuff that I like and if you ask her what I do for a living, she's like, you draw pictures and then your friends buy them on the internet. And I'm like, why not? It sounds great. I, it's close enough, you know? But I was terrified that I wouldn't be able to give her, can I give her the money she needs or can I give her the, the, 
role model that she needs, you know? And, and for me personally, the decision became um, the miserable husk of a human being uh, that is your father is going to be able to give you all kinds of money. And, mm. and, it, and that, that sentence alone was like, yep, this is the wrong way to go. I've got to do the other thing. And the, the point, just so I can finish the uh, point, you weren't cutting me off, by the way. <laughs> um, there's a warning they give you every time you get on an airplane, which is, you know, when the oxygen masks drop, mm. put the mask on yourself first before you help your children or aged parents or whatever. When it comes down to it, your first responsibility has to be to yourself. And unfortunately, it took me getting on medication and going to counseling before I finally owned up to that. Um, you, as Joel was pointing out, you can be a miserable husk of a human being and do right by others. But at the end of this journey, we only get to go down this line of life once and you have to look back. Are you gonna look back on that and say, well, I did right by everyone else. Hmm. And, and that's, it can be noble, but it's also yeah. not, it's not, it's not the only way. It, yeah. It, it, all, it sounds so selfish and dickish to say yeah. it that way, but it's kind that's of why I say true. Took drugs and counseling yeah. to right. get me to that point. <laughs> but, yeah. 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 Jump in here. Let me, yeah, I mean, let me cut in a second and actually talk specifically about your question. Um, you're, you're saying, you know, you have this scenario where you can either make money and take care of them, or you can use the money that you have and do something with yourself. And what I will tell you is that every person who has ever quit, um, I like to think of it more as starting than quitting, but either way, quitting is about sacrifice. It's not about high risk, high reward. It's about high risk, hopefully. This is a game reward. designer talking. Yeah. <laughs> High risk, high luck, low, yes. <laughs> right, no, this is, it's, it's absolutely what you're doing, or the, the process of quitting a job, especially if you have a stable day job, walking away from that to do something else in whatever order of operations, whether you start doing something else and slowly transition or whatever. Everyone's got their own life story. Everyone has their own path. But the process of doing that is a process of taking probably should be a calculated risk, but a giant risk nonetheless. And that leap is the only way to find out if it's going to be successful. It could fail, it could succeed, but if you don't make the leap, it won't happen at all. Um, that said, you have to be prepared to deal with the consequence of failure. And in your situation, were I you, I don't know that I would be. I'm not saying you should, or I'm not saying you shouldn't do this, or you should do this. I'm saying you have to look at it and say, I know what the consequences of success are, and I know what the consequences of failure are. And armed with that knowledge, I will proceed thusly. Um, and it's all about having a business plan, really. Is what it comes to. Yeah, I, I was wondering if anybody else was jumping in real quick, and we'll go to the next question ahead. after yeah. this. Well, I, I'd just like to jump in for a bit. I would say that the whole point here is that we're talking about quitting your job. And the job of taking care of your parents is the one you're talking about quitting. And when you quit your job, you have to have faith that it's going to work. When we quit our job, we, we refer to it as the jump off the cliff. Now what we did, we took our two engineer salaries and all the money we could borrow, and we quit our jobs, and our hope was that we would jump off the cliff and that we would fly before we hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, we, we took out a bunch of platinum cards from those engineering salaries that we had. And obviously it worked for us, but the whole point here is to say, if you, if you believe it's gonna work, you can't worry about the negatives in relationship with like you, your parents. Some, some people's parents, they'll do anything for, others they're more estranged, and I don't know what your situation is. But if you take the money and spend it, you won't have it, and you'll, your parents and your situation, you'll have to deal with it some other way, and that's just the way it goes. But if it works, you will be able to take care of your parents anyway, because you will fly. Just, just to pick up the mood just a little, and this is no way a comparison by any stretch, but Alex's mom, when we told them that we, we were moving, she actually said the words, are we really such bad parents that you have to move across the country to get away from us? <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh. All right, let's go to the And it was his, her, her, his mom and not my dad, but anyway. <laughs> if we're going to get to even half the people that are standing up in the next 30 minutes, well, let's do everything a bit zippier now. <laughs>